Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski. And this is uh, second in a series of shows that we are doing about the uh, 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attack on the Twin Towers in New York. Uh, and of course, this will be commemorated by a ceremony here in Beverly at the airport at the FEMA uh, facility. Uh, many of you viewers may not be aware that the Beverly team, the Massachusetts Task Force One Urban Search and Rescue, uh, was the first federal emergency team on location at, at Ground Zero. And um, my, my guest today, uh, as always, is Mark Foster. Mark? Hi. <laughs> How you doing, Walt? Uh, I'm well. And um, today uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the transportation challenges and issues that, that faced your team uh, after they got the call to report down. And we'll talk about the logistics and so forth and how you had come to rely on normal procedures, which didn't quite, didn't, uh, quite come to be. Uh, and we're, I've also got uh, two gentlemen here sitting with me, uh, Bill Burke, who at that time was the Beverly Schools Transportation Director. Bill, welcome. Thank you. Yep. And I have Dave Muse, and Dave was a, a school department mechanic and played a big part in making sure that the equipment stayed running uh, during, uh, during all of this. And we have, uh, by Skype, we have Julie Vasile who was a school bus driver, uh, and uh, she went from driving a school bus to transporting emergency management personnel down to ground zero uh, after, the, after the attack. So, Julie, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to ask, first of all, just very, very quickly, um, to give us uh, just a, a quick couple of words about where you were when, 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 the, when the attack occurred or where you were when you, when you heard about that. And, and, Mark, you can tell us quickly where, where were you when you heard I was uh, on my way down to Cape Cod. I had a little job down there at the time. It was a nice day. I remember in the morning. It was a very nice morning then. And somebody called me and said that the plane had hit the World Trade Center. And I said, well, I remember that during World War II there was a bomb that flew into the uh, Empire State Building. Yeah. So I figured it was some plane that was off course or something. And I said, don't worry about it. It's probably not a big deal. And then I stopped at uh, Mansfield Airport on the way back, and I was watching one of those little TVs that has the uh, antennas, little yeah. crinkly stuff on the tinfoil to make it work down there in Mansfield. <laughs> and I watched the pl second plane fly into the North oh, Tower, yeah. and I knew that was, uh, yeah, was, yeah. That was a real deal. Yeah. So I started calling people and then heading back to Beverly at a high rate of speed. Right. Got on the phone, called all the people, and said, we're going to go to New York right. City. And Bill, how about you? I was in my office at the time. We had just taken over a new office. Uh, Mark had brought down from uh, the Cove Elementary School. And uh, we had a TV in there. And we did see uh, the first plane hit the towers. And we didn't think much of it like Mark. Yeah. Uh, when the second plane so, hit, yeah, we so knew. You, you had nothing to do with the FEMA organization. You Absolutely. were basically a, an employee of the Beverly School. That's right. right. And we were trying to just keep the children yeah. going to and from school yeah. at that point. And, and Dave, how about you? I was just coming back from Napa. I got a pot for one of the buses, and I heard on the radio that there was an attack, you know, well, a plane crash. Yeah. So I went into the minute I had to go to the administration building in, in Briscoe because I had something wrong with my check. And, uh, and then as I was going in, I had said that on the, I just heard on the radio that there was a plane crash. So we went into where the uh, teachers go. They had a, a TV in there, and they turned the TV on, and, and we saw that's when we first saw the images of, yeah. And on fire. And then, like I said, we were watching. And then the, when the second plane hit, it mm -hmm. was just, I, I, I left. I went home yeah. and uh, called to make sure yeah. everybody was we'll, okay. And we'll get so, to how you yep. guys got involved in this here. And, and Julie, how about yourself? I, that morning, I had just dropped off my last route for the kids at the schools. So we had parked the buses, and we had heard about the first plane, I went home, and then from there I had seen the rest on TV. Yeah, but you had no idea that you would be involved in this at all, right? No, not at all. <laughs> I had two young children at home, so my concern was more where they were at and right. how would it affect them. Yeah. So, uh, Mark, let me ask you, in, 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 a, in a general sense now, 
having uh, been alerted and you, you knew you had to take your personnel down to New York City, what, what did you see as the main issues, the main challenges to, to, to doing that? Or tell us, tell us this like before that. You had already had some kind of a plan in effect, right, that how to, how to transport your people, but that didn't, didn't happen. Tell, tell yes, us well, the, um, <clears throat> the big plan the government has is that uh, they would move us to Hanscom Air Force Base. So we get there and we park there. They'd send in a, either a C-130 or 131 or one of those big planes, and they would take us to where we were going. And we'd always plan that. As a matter of fact, that year we were supposed to do that in August. But in August, the Air Force didn't have a plane that time. So we said in our activities would be at Westover Air Force Base. It was about three four hours west of here. So everybody said, well, would we cancel it? I said, no, let's do it anyhow. Let's figure out how we can get out there by ground. So we had all these old trucks. We got all the old trucks together. And then we said, well, we're going to put all the people. So I called Bill. I used knew him in the transportation. I said, Bill, can you give me a bus to take us to Westover Air Force Base? And we hired the bus, and we had a driver. I forget his name. He stayed out there at the Holiday Inn. And it worked out very smoothly, and everything worked very well. And uh, some of the trucks broke down, but we fixed them. And some of the trucks had some issues with fuel, but we fixed that. And we was, so we had a, a, a secondary plan. We said, look, we could always do this. And, uh, <laughs> but you didn't really think that, that, the bus, uh, that the school buses would be taking you down to New York, did you, at that time? No, but when the minute they said, you've got to go to New York, we knew who, who we could call. So I gave Bill a call. I said, Bill, can you get me a bus? And Bill said, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where he's going to get the bus drivers from, but he got bus drivers. <laughs> now, right. now how, many, how many people, Mark, did, was it necessary to you know, round up a lot of people? And how many people did you eventually get down to? Seventy-five people. Seventy-five oh. people, okay. So, um, and, 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 and you had to send out a How long was it before the first bus sort of left or the first group of people got on a bus and, and, and left? I think we left there about 4.30, I think, maybe. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. About five hours, five six hours later, we got everybody was on the bus and away we went. Yeah. Now we have a series of images that we're gonna we're gonna show, and I'd like you, you gentlemen, and 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 Julie to to comment on these. And first, we're gonna put up image number one, which I think uh, uh, is is uh, familiar to almost everybody that that was uh, uh, alive at that time. And I'll ask our control room to put that up, and of course that's the. Uh -huh. That's the uh, second plane hitting. You can see the back uh, building was already aflame, and that's the, at, the, at the instant of impact. And uh, so, Robert, uh, image number two, if you could, please. So tell us, uh, anybody can chime in here. Tell us what's going on here. Well, Dave will tell you. Yeah. That's uh, day one or two going on. Uh... That's uh, heading down to ground zero and loading up the bus with um, the team. Yeah, and this was uh, in what it, at the at a that's school a Jacob facility? Jacob Service Center. Yeah, we all slept at the yeah. Jacob Service. It was about a, a mile or a mile, how far north? Maybe a mile or two north uh, of the couple miles. Couple yeah. miles north yeah. on the West Side Drive in New York, big convention center, mm -hmm. and we just all slept on the floor in the convention center, and the buses could pull right up to the side and be on West Side mm -hmm. Drive. On, on low, yeah, and they had West Side uh, shut down shut from down. Uh, the J Jacob Service Center all the way down. Yeah. Just for uh, vehicles, for you know, emergency vehicles and stuff like that. So. Right. And I'm going to ask Robert to put up image number three, if he would, the next image. And so this is, says EM50. This is a Winnebago. This is not a school. But can you well, tell us one of the things we didn't have was we, we, uh, we rented a Winnebago. To, there was a, we didn't have a, a command vehicle. Yeah. So we got a Winnebago, and that allowed the people that were in charge, myself and Jerry and... And the communications people to do all the planning on the way down. One of the things you have to remember at the time was uh, there's no internet. You couldn't just dial up or Google up what's going on. So we, we had uh, an AM radio in there, and it would say this and that. And we thought there was a hundred thousand people in the tower that were needed rescuing. That was the numbers that were throwing really? out in that day. Oh, wow! And it said a hundred thousand people were going to be missing and this and that. And we had it down there, yeah. and uh, that was our uh, our command post when we got down there, and then it eventually moved into the Javits Center. Yeah. And so let's let's take a look at the next uh, image, Robert, if you would please. And uh, so tell us what's happening here. It looks like a convoy getting set up. I think it's actually coming home, That's right? That's coming home. Oh, this is yes. coming home. Okay. Yeah, because uh, there's a there's a bus, there's a, an odd bus at the end, right? Yeah, that's, that's the right. uh, uh, the bus that Bill got us. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Boston coach. And, and how many how many days later was this after after you went down there? When, when did you find eight it? Eight days later. Eight days. Eight, eight days later, you yeah. finally got. They home. wanted us to go to New Jersey. 
Uh huh. Remember? <laughs> I said, no, no. <laughs> we were all like, we had almost ready for a mutiny. We were like, no, we're not going to New Jersey. We're going home. <laughs> okay. He wants to go talk about it in New Jersey. Yeah. Said, no, that's okay. No, we're going north, not yeah. south. So, and let's let's take a look at the next image, please. Uh, escorted us. And then, Same so, tell escort. us about. I think I think uh, Dave, you have a you have an interesting story about uh, the the poli police cruisers and and escorting you down to Ground Zero. Tell us about that. Yeah, we we had a report of um, uniforms getting stolen out of Boston. So I approached Mark and thinking, we don't know what was going on, so we thought about getting um, escorts down there, you know, police officers and stuff. So we had a couple of detectives from uh, New York that used to take us down, escort us down there, and uh, get us to where we had to go, even though they told us this is as far as we go. No, it's not close enough, so we... They jumped in the car and we went right to the sit right there, you right did, on. You right, just stayed right, right on the tail of the police we just cruiser. Went, went right all down, the way to, right, right in, down in, in, right all in. the way to ground zero. Now, now, were there mm -hmm. other vehicles and that were getting uh, th had to get through checkpoints and get checked out and things like that? Oh yeah, they were checking yeah. out. So, I think uh, if you went to Golden Eagle, you take a two-hour round trip, right? Yeah. yeah. They come in, they'd go through, through your bus, but you have to remember the school bus has a whole bunch of guys with helmets on. They're waving to the police, and yeah. Yeah. they we waved just, us by. Right just by. Wait, wait, you by. Okay, so you you weren't going to stop for anything, right? No. No, it was too important to get down. This, this is a, a very specialized team to get there. This yeah. Is, you know. yeah, and, yeah. And, and now, Bill, so tell us how, how you how you managed the bus and how you got there. You got a call from Mark. Tell, tell us about that. Mark called me. I, uh, I just, I, I hesitated, I believe, for a minute. And Mark would, Mark, Mark explained to me. You know I can take these buses. <laughs> <laughs> so you have no so, choice in the matter, right? And there was no doubt in my mind he could take the buses. But I wanted to know how I was going to, who I was going to get. Buses are easy. Buses are just mechanical. Now I have to get two good people for him. Yeah. David stepped up immediately. Julie stepped up immediately. I mean, it was just like. Okay, so we're going to ask Julie. Julie, tell tell who contacted you first, and and uh, when did you realize that you'd be driving a school bus down to New York? It was eleven thirty, Tuesday morning. Wow. I had just come back in from dropping off the kindergarten kids, so the, they were done with the first half of the school day. So I brought them home, and I know that the families were really concerned because of all the information going on over the news. I had gone back to the base, and then we, Bill had called all us drivers in, and they were all, we were all in a circle, and Mr. Burke had just said, I need two volunteers to take these buses to New York, and it was just, there was no thought except step forward. I didn't think of family, my children, I just stepped forward, and David and I have always been good friends, so I felt comfortable. Yeah. Being with David. Yeah. So how much how much time did you have? Uh, what, I mean, what did you do to prepare? You didn't pack a big suitcase or anything, did you? What What did you do to prepare to go down? Did you know you'd be gone for eight days? No, we had no idea. I think David and I both thought we would just be dropping them off and turning around and coming back and, and come right back. Uh, yeah. But that didn't happen. <laughs> 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 so I think Bill had asked us to finish our shifts, to get the last group of kids home. For the two o'clock school that day ended. Park well, I took the bus to my house, packed a bag, and headed up to Airport Road. Called my parents. Hmm. Called you know, hugged my kids, and went to New York. Now, did did, did your parents have any uh, sort of trepidations about you traveling down there? Did they Very say, what, much. What, what are you doing? Now, where do you, your parents live here in Beverly? When, they do. Time? They live right on Trash Street. Uh-huh. So my father's older, and nobody knew what was going on. Nobody knew if this was going to affect just in New York. There would be other attacks. Um, all I said to them was, I just trust you with my kids. I had a five and a ten year. I said, just take care of my kids and let me do this. Yeah. <laughs> Ironically... When I called my dad, and I said, because they're so close to the airport, I said, we'll be up at the airport lining up for the convoy. If you have any problems, come, come on up. You know. Long story short, he walked around the bus, picked the tires, 
did a free trip back <laughs> in. as we were pulling out. I think the most been me- like memorable moment is he put his hat down on his chest and he saluted us. Oh, as wow. we pulled away. wonderful, wonderful. I think that's when we knew it was real. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you for that. They're very moving. And so, uh, Robert, uh, can you show us uh, uh, the next image here that we have? And uh, who wants to chat about this? What's happening here? Uh, I think that's who are those two people. Are those part of your your group? Or? Yes, they are. Because we had a an old uh, cockpit truck and a. Yeah. A blazer and yeah, you can see the spare tire in the back of that truck yes. there for the bus. I put yeah, I think that was actually a Westover. That was the first time we went to Westover and it worked out very well. Yeah, because oh, okay. I'm not so sure that's the past is 38, is okay. it? This yeah. was the, uh, the dry this, run. Yeah. Huh? It was the our dry, dry run, run the time yeah. before. Yeah, the yes. Time before. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, another image, Robert. The next image. That's a Westover, Westover. also. It's the canines, and it's showing mm-hmm. the fleet we put together to go to Westover. That's the same fleet that we took down to 9-11. Okay. Yeah. So, so it was really serendipitous that, that you, you by, right. by accident, really, as a second choice, you, you went with the buses, and that's, that's really what happened during the, the actual event, right? Oh, well, we went with the uh, first choice. I, I like to use local people, right? Uh, people, right. Well, that's what no, we're I mean, you, were supposed to be, you were supposed to be flown down, right? So, yes. Yeah, that was, yeah. that Comfortably. Was, that was the, the, the... It's always great when you say, how you do not, who are you? How are you, is, <laughs> how are you not, who are you? <laughs> Right. And uh, uh, do we have anything else there, Robert? Any other yeah. images? Uh, kind of lost track. And so this this is a, a kind of convoying through. I don't know where. Do you know about where about this this might have been? No, I'm not really sure. Another okay. convoy of something and yeah. And uh, anything else, Robert? And oh, so there's a team is, with the buses in the in the picture too. That's yeah. in. Yeah, that's and that, coming back. Okay, and that's all of yeah. the uh, uh, task force number one people. Yeah, we stopped at the uh, uh, Burger King or Howard yeah, John. Yeah, a Burger King it was. Yeah. Burger King on the mass. Yeah, pike. it was on, on the, the pike. pike. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the dogs could take a break. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I also have in front of me here, and I'll ask Matt, my cameraman, to zero in on this. Uh, another image, a group shot, and. Uh, I think uh, Dave brought uh, down a bit, uh, down. Dave brought this in, and uh, so tell us uh, what we're looking. Can you can you zoom in a little bit further on that, Matt? If you could. So it is Dave right there, younger Dave by twenty years. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> With a dog biting okay. him. There's a dog biting him on the fanny somewhere <laughs> over there. Practicing. His dog, and that's George W. Bush, number forty-three, I guess, and. Uh, the uh, president and the rest of our team standing there. Right. And if you if you zoom out a little bit, uh, Matt, uh, the, the audience can see, our viewers can see that this was actually signed with appreciation, and that's George Bush's uh, uh, signature there. Okay. Yeah. Hey. And uh, now, Dave, you your your job you were you were a, a mechanic. You you had to your job was to keep these things uh, these things mm-hmm. going right and make sure yes. things didn't. Didn't break down. So what? What was? I understand that you had to commandeer some uh, garage space when you were down in New York. Tell, tell us yeah, about well, that. A lot of these vehicles were surplus, army surplus. So it was a long drive for those vehicles. Yeah, we had mufflers <laughs> falling off, and, and the, the uh, vehicle I was following was sparks coming out underneath there. The, the, it was the suspension was bottoming out and everything. So I happened to be driving by the Con Ed, and I went in and I talked to. The gate, the you know, the guards at the gate, and they couldn't really help me. And then there was a bunch of people walking by in their suits and ties, overheard something going on. Not something going on, but talking. Talking to you. And yeah. uh, approached and asked what was going on, and I explained what was happening. And they said, whatever this man needs, use <laughs> anything that we have, via, you know, the garages, any tools, anything. So I had a whole shop with... Well, this is cutting torch tools, everything. They all, yeah, so. <laughs> you had everything you needed. Everything right? needed, yeah. I welded the muffler on, fixed the suspension. I mean, I did pretty much everything in there. So. Yeah. Now, how many how many trips did you make uh, back and forth? Just one trip each way. Just one trip, okay. But, but Dave, every day, would go a couple times with them. They would get, yeah, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning, they wake me up, you know, after having one hour of sleep or something. And mm-hmm. going down there at the middle of the night was by myself was just totally. 
Yeah, unbelievable. Especially that night it rained. Remember it rained out yeah. and everything was just, it was like a Batman movie. That's how I look at it. It was just dark, yeah. dreary. So you were going back and forth to bring parts or, or what, what people, was people? Yeah. Oh, people. Some, some, log some logistics too, but people, mostly people, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And you say that eventually you had about 75 of your... Uh, well, they all went down. 75 went, went down, 75 came back. Yeah, okay. And then... Uh, and Plus, these were, these were what, what, sort of, uh, what sort of specialties or what, what, what kind of folks were these? That, uh, well, engineers and everybody. You'd uh, rescue people, communications people, medical people, doctors. Uh, yeah, it was a regular was a type 1 uh, rescue team. Yeah. And and so uh, and and you were able, as you say, able to uh, go in there and turn on a dime, make a turnaround on a dime. Tell us about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we figured out that the school buses were because the front engines. Yeah. Those rear those coaches were, had rear engines and they were getting clogged up the you know the air filters and they would just die on them and stuff. So uh, they figured out the school buses was the way to go from the dust and plus turning around and getting into these some of those small, small streets that lined up on the around like Wall Street area. Yeah. Because they had sent me down to the, get the California team. Yeah. And all the way down through, you know, it, it worked out good to get through Wall Street, and that's where we found yeah. them down there. So I, I think folks will remember that, that the, the pictures, when, when, when the buildings collapsed, all of that gray white dust mm. was, was, was everywhere. Was everywhere. 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 Does your guy have the two photos? There's a photo that shows there's a, from the top of the bus into to the World Trade Center. I think I sent that up to you. Um, I think that's that's on the next. Uh, oh, all right, because Dave segment. went down there and he had a couple of. Did you have a camera? Here? I had a camera. Yes. Yeah. And he pulled yeah. into the ground zero and he opened the hatch on the top, stood I on the bus. Climbed up the bus and took a picture of the whole scene. Yeah. Yeah. And not many people take. Not many people took pictures at the at the World Trade Center, you know, because the previous event was the uh, Oklahoma City bombing. The Oklahoma City bombing area. All the f pictures were taken by the FBI because it was a. Uh, crime scene. So a lot of people thought the FBI was going to take everybody's picture. So everybody was kind of like very cautious about taking pictures. But Dave got some. Julie got up, went and bought a camera, right? And we yeah. just took as many as we yeah. could. Okay. So they uh, did, did they rope it or did they did they white uh, yellow tape it off as a, as a, a, a crime scene there? What, what? No, no. The first day it was crazy the first day, right? First day was just... No, but no, no, was no, it was, everybody was in there. Yeah, and well, that's uh, why the people were taking pictures. That's why I took pictures. Yeah. Well, they're taking pictures. I might as well take pictures. But yeah. the first picture was uh, the jet engine when we we, we, were going church, we were going down Church Street, and I, Mark was standing next to me in the wheel well. This is one of the engines that fell off one yes, of the planes. Mm -hmm. The second when the second plane hit the building, it, it, you can see a, 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 a white smoke, and that's yeah. landed on Church Street. And I looked over and I says, "Mark, that's a jet engine." Oh, that's amazing! And I, and I took there's a picture of that. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah, that's yeah. And that's now, when it was, oh my head, this is real, you know, yeah. that, that's hit us. So yeah. how many, uh, I mean, there must have been people then, um, uh, search and rescue teams and, and, and uh, disaster uh, uh, response teams from all over the, all over the country. How, how, did they, how did they maintain some sort of a semblance of who's going to do what and, and maintain order with all of these Well, people? day one, there was no order at all. Day that night, nobody did anything. Everybody pulled back. Even the city of New York, nobody did anything on the it's nighttime, the first night. Yeah. And the second day came along, everybody kind of came in. Still no order that I saw, right? Not in the morning, no. Not in the morning. They were carrying out the equipment. And, you know, we unloaded off the truck, and then they were carrying it off to this, mm -hmm. you know, they didn't even know where to put it. So we had to set up the t Yeah, t by the day encampment. three or four, they'd start locking things down. And by then, you know, you have to, most of these teams take a, a team that's called a overhead team to come in and tell you what to do and yeah. supervise. They didn't get there until day two or three. There's nobody was flying. No. Yeah. Um, it was and all the people in New York, most of the command staff in New York had died. So it was very, very, it wasn't until about four days it started to get it under control. Started to get more, yeah, more controlled, yeah. 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 Now let's, let's talk a little bit about um, this um, September 11th. Um, uh, there will be a commemorative ceremony at, at your facility right next to the airport called Beverly Never Forgets 20th Anniversary of September 11th uh, from 11 to 4. Tell us a little bit about that, what's going to happen there. At, um, we have a, oh, we're going to have a, a morning uh, uh, member, a remembrance ceremony. I think it's at 11.30. The gates will open at 11. The public can come in. We should have uh, quite a few people there park on the airport road on the street, and there's a ball field we open down there, and some of the, the airport parking lot, of course. 
And we'll have a uh, ceremony. It'll probably last about an hour. We have some speakers coming. We're going to fly over from the uh, National Guard. We'll do a flyover. And then after that, we're going to have an open house. For the next two hours, we're going to open up the whole site. Um, there's some history in there. There's an old missile silo. We have some of the missile equipment coming up for the time. We have some of our, our rescue equipment will be out. We'll have the dogs doing uh, demonstrations. And Faye Salt and her people will be uh, doing some historical background. We'll have some different booths and things like that. So it should be a good day. Yeah. So you mentioned Faye Salt, and we had Faye on uh, our first program uh, with Mark. And Faye is in, on the board of directors of Historic Beverly. Uh, so uh, Mark's organization, Historic Beverly, and the city of Beverly are kind of the three co-sponsors of yes. this of this event. So uh, in addition to the um, uh, the the speeches that will uh, some of the folks, I think um, Representative Moulton will be there, yes. Congressman Moulton, and uh, and some of our city. Uh, uh, Joan Lovely, I believe, our state senator, will be there oh. as well. And then afterwards, there will be uh, guides and and uh, uh, volunteers to take folks around. As you say, there's an old uh, missile silo. Uh, there's a museum, a 9-11 museum. There's a 9-11 museum that they'll be able to. And uh, I might add that uh, um, BevCam will be there, and we will be able to broadcast this event. We will be broadcasting this event live as, as it's taking place. And we'll also be, be streaming it on YouTube and on our, uh, on our website. Uh, and, and as you say, there will be a flyover yeah. um, uh, by the, is it the, the National Mass Guard? Mass National Guard, at, yes. At the, at the National Guard that, that will be happening as well. And uh, the public is invited, right? Yep. Everybody, everybody uh, within the sound of our voice uh, is. Uh, Come on down, have a great time. Yeah. So the, meet some nice people. The, 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 they'll be parking uh, uh, ahead of the oh, the the gates there. There's a big soccer field there and so forth. Yeah. So they usually have parking there when they have near show. There's plenty of parking all on the streets there, right? Yeah. On yeah. one side. And then so at, and at 11 o'clock, the gates will open because it's a secure facility, as anybody who's driven there knows. And then all the people will, will come in, and there'll be about a 45-minute hour uh, actual ceremony there. Right. With, uh, and there'll be some bagpipes playing as well, I understand. Oh, you know, a typical fire department <laughs> memorial, yes. <laughs> yeah. And if, uh, if, if folks want to get a little bit more information, I'll ask Robert to put up. This is your, your website and phone number. So uh, www.matf.org. And uh, I went on that site, and, and right on the front, uh, the home page, there's a big, long article. The first thing you see is an article about the um, Beverly Never Forgets uh, commemorative ceremonies, which, uh, which uh, you, can, you can read and get more information. And that number is, where, where does that ring? Is that a general number? Uh, That's the main number up there, 978-922-5680. So if you want to get some up-to-date information, you can, you can use that. So uh, anyway, uh, we're, we're just about out of time. And I do, wanna, I do wanna thank uh, my guests, Mark Foster uh, and uh, Bill Burke, who thank was you. with the Beverly a school transportation uh, group uh, at, at, at during 9/11, and Dave Muse, who made sure all the buses were 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 uh, running correctly, and Julie Vasile from your your tell the folks you're you're actually sitting in North Carolina right now, are you not? South Carolina. Oh, I'm sorry, Myrtle South Beach. Ca Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So, uh, Julie, thank you for joining us. Thank via, you for having me via Skype. And Julie was called up one day. She was driving kindergarten kids to school, and the next day she was driving. Emergency response personnel to Ground Zero. Thank you, Julie, very much. Thank you for having us. Yeah. And I'd like to uh, remind our viewers that you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.